Oh, gee, someone's taken the sign down, little buggers. So you don't even know where you are. I mean, it's, it's that lovely sign there. It's gone now. Anyway, it's... Uh, 4.20, or 4, sorry, 4.12 in the afternoon, and it's a little bit overcast, but it's not that grey, and I don't think the sun's going to come out today. Pity. Oh, you've got your, um, pearl tarders to greet you, or your, your foliaces, or your hookery eyes. You want to just pass the camera through those for you. Usually a lot more down here. I cleaned the, uh, the lens specially uh, the other day, so I've probably got muck on it already. There's more down here, but uh, oh, we, oh, yeah, you can see the it's pretty um, pretty thick down there. I don't know how close I can get. But you can see a bit of height and moss there, starting to come into flower. There's slightly pink flowers. Uh, so yeah, in some years you get quite a lot down here, but uh, it's getting a bit patchy here and there. Here's a good little patch here. Oh, some glandulitoras there. Still only in the tiddly pop stage, but uh, I know we can run the camera through here. If you like that overseas, I don't know. But uh, anyway, if uh, the great tennis is going to tell you how smegging hot is, he says, you know, tell him, well, can you grow Drosocopensis in chalk? Ask him that one. Do they grow better in chalk? They grow nice, big, fat, juicy red roots with lovely crimson red root hairs if you grow them in chalk. Well, can you, punk? Tell him that one. I want to see him grow Drosocopensis in chalk. That will, that will sort out the men from the boys. Determine how smegging hot he really is. Fancy pulling that Machiavellian stunt or fast one on me, eh? at the expense of my late grandfather who made the ultimate sacrifice in World War II giving me a choice of being at the front of the table going to the back and honouring my grandfather I mean really did I really have a choice and then email, emailing me back within about two minutes saying no I can't have it the way in the back of the paper to honour my grandfather he already knew there was no way so really it wasn't a choice at all was it he already knew I couldn't have it the way I wanted it at the back of the paper to honour my grandfather. It was just an excuse, a Machiavellian way of getting me out of the title or the banner head of the paper, really, isn't it? You know? And he's probably telling everyone he knew that I chose to do that. Well, you, you get it from the person myself. I did not choose to do it that way. There was, was really no choice. That's why it's Machiavellian. I didn't really have a choice. He really was trying to dangle a carrot that wasn't really there. Now, can you see all those lovely acacias there? Look at that. Does that look lovely? Well, as you get further on, another these last until um, you know, usually August and September are the uh, the months for the uh, the wattles or the acacias, and then you get into the tea trees. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so there's a, basically two groups of tea trees that we call tea trees. Uh, so anyway, here are the uh, the swamp pools. I'm sorry I'm like this, but you know, I, I went to the uh, the specialists. They, uh, I, I told them I wasn't. I was a bit apprehensive about you know going on medication because I've never been on any medication in my life. I mean, I have a headache what once every ten years and take an aspirin. So you know. So being so apprehensive about that, you would have thought they would have said, "Oh, we'll show you. We're the experts. We know exactly what we're doing." But no, 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 the bloody uh, so-called specialist puts me on the generic drug with all the side effects. And I only find this out from the two pharmacists over the period of being on the court. When I walk around the door, the bloke says, oh, they haven't worked. And I think, well, yeah, I could have told you that after the first month. You've had me on these medications for an extra two months for no good reason. Thank you very much. After being telling you I was a bit apprehensive... You know, you put me on the cheap generic one. I mean, was that so you can actually save a bit of money and make more profit? Well, frankly, I think it's time for you. I mean, if you were a real doctor, my father would have you struck off. 
But considering you're not a real doctor, I just think it's time for you to uh, pack up your practice, practice, haha, and move into state. I think that would be the best course of action for you. It's time to stop making money for jam, and uh, you know, I mean, if you're going to make, if you're going to charge those sort of prices, you've got to get the job done. You know, you've got to come up with the goods, as we say. So it's about time you packed up and moved out of Adelaide and gone went in state or maybe overseas. I think it's good riddance for you. We all know who you are now. Because I've got the balls to be honest about it, okay? You probably haven't. But you can see all these ones down here. I hope I don't slip into the water. And I'm sorry, sorry I'm ranting and raving like this, but uh, I'm probably still coming down off of these... Uh, this so-called medication, I'm still having, uh, I mean, my front two teeth are, st are out of alignment now. They've been in alignment since, so since my second, I got my second set of teeth. So what's that, 35 years. So, you know, thank you very much. One of the side effects now is for the rest of my life, the top two, my teeth are now going to be out of alignment. <laughs> thank you very much. I mean, that way explain why for the last six weeks or so, and further on, with the medication, my, my jaw was aching and clicking at least once and sometimes twice a day. So, yeah. Powerful drugs, or powerful side effect drugs, yes. Thank you very much. But, uh, yes. Oh, I think you need to pull your finger out and do the job properly, I think. Anyway, we end up growing Drosocopensis and ah, the sun use in chalk with lovely fat, big red coloured roots with lovely crimson red root hairs. We haven't seen on them plants properly since the 1970s. Well, I think well, then we would have, I would have come up with the goods and done the job properly. Anyway, this one I filmed before. It uh, wasn't filled up with water before, so you never know. Could find a U-tip, but you can see the plants growing around the side here. I mean, I've worked my butt off for years just so we could have a proper CP future, so we could bring the plant into line with all the other plants in horticulture. You know, you go to any other plant club, and they have strict rules of you know how to grow the things. You know, you there's heaps of plants on the trading table, seeds, and everything you can do there. It's not quite like that with CPs, you know. You know, you, you take them home; they're still hard to grow. You know, they don't grow the way you want them. They're not fully satisfying. Because in horticulture, you should be always be able to grow the plants better, faster, more colourful than they do grow in the wild because you know how they grow in the wild and you can tweak all the variables, you know. You know, all the all the nutrients they like, all the symbiotic relations that they have, you can tweak all of those. You can grow them in a lovely greenhouse, have the atmosphere just the way to the best. and You can tweak all the variables. So in horticulture, the plants should always grow bigger, faster, more colourful than they do in the wild. But that's just not the case with cardamom plants or CPs. It's never been that way for me, for my whole life. It's just, they've been so hard. I mean, I couldn't even grow them in peat and sand the way they grew from probably two basketball courts uh, over the back of my place. So they always grew better and faster, more colourful and bigger and everything, you know, more robust and everything. And I really think that the... The one pea plant that really stands out and says there's something wrong is Drosera gigantea. If you've ever seen it growing properly in deep sand, not this stuff that grows on the granite aprons they keep going on about. I mean, when you get to a proper stand of Drosera gigantea growing in deep sand, I mean, they grow to the size of a small Christmas tree. They're robust. I used to stub my toe in, in a Wellington boot. So my, my toe was already in a Wellington boot, my mum's Wellington boot. And invariably, I would stub my toe walking between these things. I don't know what it is. There's some something to do with it. The, must be the way they the way they scattered or spread. It forces you to walk into one or something. It must be the case. Anyway, now we have got these uh, Drosera planchonii here, and you can see them growing all around here. I might try and take the camera down, and some of them are in flower. But I'll try and find a heap load of these and. Pass the camera through it, but uh, well, no, it looks a bit dry here actually for this time of year. It should be a, a bit wetter. But, 
but uh, it's not really grey enough, you know. Usually when I come here the third week of August, like like a week ago, it's usually grey and then you get these shafts of sunlight coming through, but of course I don't think the sunlight's going to come out today. But anyway, hopefully I'll leave the world of CPs in a much better place than where it was. Um, hopefully I would have brought it into the 20th century. Yes, the 20th century, you know, where it should have been in the 1970s when I was growing up. I should have been, a, should have been able to go down to the library, get a book out and should have, you know, told me how to do this, give me a recipe of, you know, how to make a basic soil that would work and so that they would grow better, stronger, faster than they even did in the wild. But as I said, the one... You can see the ants are even out, even today. The one key species, or the sentinel species, I would say, and the gravillias are out, is... Uh, Drosia gigantea. I mean, even its look, it's got this sort of awesome um, glaucus upper part that goes you know, gold and the orange in parts and down the base it's almost perfectly red around the stipulet base and thick you know the size of some of them can be up to the size of a small uh, one of those uh, indelible pencil things it gets thicker it gets thicker than the, uh, a normal pencil uh, some of them I mean that it's probably uh, I wouldn't even say it's arguably the most robust sundew on the planet. It really, it just is. You know, if you get them in deep sand, it just is the most robust sundew on the planet. And it is the one that, you know, when you go out into the, look at all the CPs around the world, invariably you'll find them, and around them you'll find plants that have got some sort of glaucous nature to them, around them. And some CPs sort of get parts of them going, becoming glaucous, but Joss's Gigander truly is one that really is glaucous and really smacks it. There's something out there, something else going on. How come it, it gets to be so robust? And uh, I mean, because it goes dormant so late in the season and comes back so early. I mean, so he's basically growing up, dying back two meters under the sand and growing back two meters in such a short turnaround that where does all that energy and reserves come from? The only, the only reasonable conclusion, you, it must be fixing nitrogen because there's just no other way you could get that sort of growth unless it could fix nitrogen. And you get other strange things like uh, 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 Gravillia robusta. You know, that's the largest member of the Australian Proteaceae or shrub band, the Australia's largest shrub family basically and that grows to the size of a uh, you know whopping great tree in about seven years when it's growing on wet swampy ground you think well how can it do that it has to be there has to be some form of nitrogen fixation going on there's just no other explanation you can get a tree to grow from a seed to a tree in seven years to be that sort of stature but it only seems to occur when they grow on swampy ground so there's sort of like a, a, a deeper hidden connection between CPs which are supposed to be on the lowest nutrient level rung of most of the uh, Australian native plants. I mean, we do have the most in the whole world. I mean, we are the oldest, flattest, driest, dustiest, saltiest continent on the planet. And we have a large whack of serpentine, patchy serpentine area in Western Australia. Perhaps there's a connection. Well... We'll see over the next few months towards the end of the year whether I have actually cracked it. Whether we'll actually be able to start growing carnivorous plants and other seemingly, seemingly nutrient poor plants that are related in chalk. You know, the one thing that they say, oh you can't grow them in uh, calcium, you know, they don't like calcium, they hate calcium. And uh, yeah, I think actually that's the one key thing that you actually need because they, most plants need calcium because they have calcium pectate around every single cell of, you know, most of their structure. They're most normal plants and I'm thinking, well, I think CPs are actually normal plants. They do actually require calcium, but in a very special form, you know.
And in that form, it actually helps with nitrogen fixation. So, you know. Oh, look at this. We've got some running postman up against some Hubertia. Anyway, I think I'm uh, end this sort of rant here, I think. Because uh, well, I don't think it's coming. I don't know whether I'll publish this or not. Oh, look at the size of that. Uh, Sun or all. Oh, oh, I think it's your bonus today. Look at that. <coughs> Look at the size of that one. So I did tell um, the woman, after we had a bushfire, there were some massive ones of these. We saw even bigger than this. And she just wouldn't believe us. That was after that bushfire in um, 2003. I think it was 2003. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, they're not bad. But we've seen bigger. There's some down here as well. Oh, yes, there you go, some bigger ones. Look at that. Look at the size of that. So, you know, I'm not lying. They can get bigger. But, yeah, we saw some massive ones after the bushfire. Oh, look at that, yeah. There you go. They're getting to that sort of size. But uh, we have uh, seen slightly bigger. That was after a bushfire, so, you know. Oh, here's one. Oh, look at that. I mean... <laughs> There's my clock. You know how big my clock is. <laughs> you can take that two ways if you don't listen to it properly. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, so hopefully by the end of this year we'll have come to the end of a big long 40 year journey and we'll be growing plants, sea peas, in chalk and getting much better results. You know, we'll be getting the big fat red roots with the lovely crimson root hairs on them and uh, everything will be history by then. But, uh, yeah. It's only got four petals. Okay. Not quite a style idiom, but anyway. Okay. I think I'm going to stop here, I think, and... Uh, Another one.